Assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today's lecture is about soft x-ray spectra and in this lecture our focus will be on small ne and large ne curves actually in the previous lecture we have studied about molecular orbital theory or band theory for atoms so if we see here there is a single atom and this is the 3s orbital of single atom and this is the 3p orbital of single atom however if we collectively arrange the uh, orbitals for five approximately closely placed atoms so these are the 3s orbitals of five atoms and these are the 3p orbitals of five atoms which are stacked together however in a mole approximately there are 6.02 into 10 raised to power 23 atoms so if we draw the 3s orbital of so many uh, atoms then these are so closely spaced that we call them as bands so not orbitals we call them as bands because they are so much closely spaced with each other one other difference is that in a single atom you see there is a large gap between 3s and 3p however as the number of atoms is increasing the gap is reducing and if we see in a mole or in a multitude of atoms the uh, two regions are so close to each other that now electrons can freely move from 3s to 3p because of the overlapping of these two orbitals so all this discussion was just a theoretical discussion and there was no practical evidence for this band theory but soft x-ray spectra provide the experimental evidence of existence of band theory so the existence of energy bands postulated in the preceding section is borne out by a study of soft x-ray spectra it is indeed a study of such spectra which provides experimental information about the bands so the formation of lines and of bands in soft x-ray spectra has been explained in this diagram so here is the formation of lines and here is the formation of bands actually when a cooled metal is bombarded by a beam of high speed electrons some of the electrons in a low energy level of metallic atom may be energized sufficiently to be ejected electrons taking the vacant place from higher levels will cause an emission of radiation in the x-ray region dependent on the energy changes involved so electronic movements into the k shell give rise to k lines in the x-ray spectrum similarly electrons moving into the l shell will give l lines and so on and so forth the resulting x-ray spectra provides extremely interesting results if the matter involved is present at a vapor at low pressure a complete line spectrum is obtained as we are seeing here in this diagram but as the pressure is increased as the atoms atoms get closer together the k lines and l lines they are merged together to form bands so these bands are also occurring when the metal is in solid form actually when a cooled metal is bombarded by a beam of high speed electrons some of the electrons in a no energy level of the metallic atom may be energized sufficiently to be ejected so the electrons taking the vacant place from the higher levels will cause an emission of radiation in the x-ray region depending on the energy involved so electronic movements into the k shell will give rise to k lines similarly the electrons moving into the l shell will give l lines and so on the resulting x-ray spectra provide extremely interesting results if the matter involved is present at a vapor as a vapor at low pressure a complete line spectrum results so as we are seeing here there are k lines and l lines similarly m lines here etc but as the pressure is increased yani k the atoms get closer together the k lines will merge together similarly the l lines will merge together and they form bands similar bands also occur when the metal is present in solid form rather than vapor form the presence of these bands in the spectrum shows the presence of energy bands in the metal 
once the atoms of the metal get close enough together electrons in the energy band of the metallic atoms moving into the k and l shell gives spectral bands rather than spectral lines so the idea of energy bands established both theoretically and experimentally give a new picture of the energy levels within the crystal of a metal the inner electrons of the atom occupy localized orbitals and not bands but the valency orbitals and higher ones merge into energy bands rather than energy lines representing a state of high delocalization so after understanding the soft x-ray spectra and formation of lines in case of atomic vapors and formation of bands in case of solid metal atoms or the metal atoms at high pressure now we are uh, in a position to understand the new term which is called as small any curves so here we are showing a curve which is represented here and it is formed by drawing uh, n e at y axis and e that is energy along x axis so what are these small any curves actually these curves are used to show the complete distribution of electrons between the range of energy levels in an energy band for example in this figure a two curves have been shown whereas at a the curve is at normal temperature whereas at b the curve is at absolute zero so first of all we see the curve at normal temperature so it shows a typical small any curve for a metal at normal temperature the energy of the electrons in the band with the curve varies from point a to point b and the energy difference between a and b measures the width of the energy band so from this point to this point is actually the width of the energy band and it varies from metal to metal but it is of the order of 1 to 10 electron volts the curve shows that at point C is the most favored energy and the area under the curve is proportional to the total number of electrons in that particular band. Now let's see the second curve and this curve is at absolute zero. So as the temperature is decreased, the right hand side of this any curve becomes more and more vertical and at at absolute zero it becomes completely vertical this means that the high energy end of the energy band is sharp at absolute zero but becomes more and more diffuse as the temperature rises so uh, here is the uh, curve in normal temperature but at the temperature is reduced so the curve uh, loses its slope and it becomes straight and it touch down the x-axis the effect of the temperature on the spectral band is due to the effect of temperature on the occupancy of the available energy levels or states within a band. At absolute zero, it is assumed that available electrons occupy all the lowest available energy levels within the band. If the highest of these occupied levels has an energy of x, there will be no electron with the high energy value. The right hand boundary of this small any curve will therefore be at x. However, at high temperature, thermal energy will promote at least some electrons into the levels with higher with energy higher than x so that the vertical boundary can disappear and then it again converts into a slope or we can say that this curve then finally converts again into this curve of at normal temperature. Each band in a soft x-ray spectrum will have a corresponding small and knee curve so that there may be more than one as shown in figure 1 to 8. So in such case it will be seen that there are energy gaps. So if we are seeing here that there lies this energy gap, it is certain that the, the energies between M and N for which there are no electrons. The gaps between the two energy levels, they may be wide or they may be narrow or they may be non-existent uh, when the two small any curves overlap with each other. So the distance between these two curves depends upon the nature of the metal which we are studying. So up till now we have discussed what are the soft x-ray spectra and then what are the small any curves. 
so small any curves are actually giving us information about the distribution of electrons uh, in various energy levels of a band now we are at a stage to understand what does large or capital any curve means so in small any curve there is a distribution of electrons versus the energy levels whereas in large any curves we are plotting two things at one time we are not only plotting distribution of electrons but we are also plotting the presence of available energy levels actually this information was missing in small any curves where we were just talking about distribution of electrons but here we are not only talking about distribution of electrons but we are also talking about the distribution of energy levels so two things are discussed here in capital any or large any curves so if we are seeing here yeah, or we can just simplify it that these are the two energy bands uh, and if we see here that this energy band is completely filled with distribution of electrons as it is represented by the shaded region however at absolute zero we are seeing here that this curve has been changed this curve is at normal temperature however at absolute zero all the electrons will shift back and they will occupy the lowest energy levels so this shaded portion indicates the lowest possible energy levels whereas the uh, empty energy bands are, av are available so if we dr were drawing only small any curves then we were not having the information of orbitals that were present but if we draw the orbitals by this large any curve and by indicating the information of distribution electrons by shading the area so now we have two types of information one is that what is the distribution of electrons and other is what is the distribution of energy levels and how many orbitals are filled and how many orbitals are empty so it means more comprehensive information is obtained in large any curves rather than small any curves just like small any curves large any curves may be separated by an energy gap as shown in the figure alternatively the two any curves may overlap with each other so it is the shape of any curve which is of vital importance in conductivity considerations actually electrical conductivity is associated with partially filled energy bands or with filled energy bands overlapping with empty or partially filled ones so there must be unoccupied energy states close to the occupied ones so that electrons can easily be promoted so if we see in this diagram so here we are drawing the any curve for univalent metal so if we are seeing that this is the 3s band and this is the 3 band 3p band and both these bands are overlapping with each other in this region so as it is 3s univalent so if we are seeing here that this 3s is half filled so as it has space and it is overlapping with 3p orbital so the electrons can jump from the ground level or low level energy levels to high energy levels so in this way a conductivity can occurs however if there is a large gap between 3s and 3p then there will be no possibility of conductivity and in case of insulators there is a large energy difference between the filled energy level and the conduction band so this was all about today's lecture i hope you have well understood this lecture but if still you feel confusion then let me know in the comment section i will respond to your queries as soon as possible okay thank you allah hafiz